Our first guest tonight is the tireless and immaculate host and producer of more shows than they list in the TV guide on December 31st. His will be the last face you see before losing consciousness as he rings in 2014 on the awkwardly titled Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve with Ryan Seacrest right here on ABC. Please welcome Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to I, see you. You know that I'm obsessed with your um, work habits and your day in, in general. In, in a like a good way? Uh, neither good nor bad. Okay. Just very interested yes. in it. For instance, I, I want to know, like, what was your day today? What From the morning, what time did you wake up, and what have you done? So I got up when it was pretty cold and dark this morning, about 5 o'clock. I went and did the, uh, I did a lot of radio today. Today was a, a real radio day. I, okay. did the, I did the local radio show here. Afterwards, I did this syndicated radio show across the country. Then I did the American Top 40 year-end countdown for the contemporary hit radio stations. And then the American Top 40 countdown year-end special for the hot adult contemporary radio stations. And then I did a uh, charity hello to Bob Pittman, the chairman of Clear Channel. And then I had a green juice. I went to the gym. I put on a nice suit, and I came over here to see you. That's it. That's well, it. it was a light day for you, then. But it was, all, it was all radio today. And I don't think people even realize, like, one of those things on your list is a four-hour-long radio show. Yeah, and one of those things, it's four. Yeah, the, the radio shows are they're longer than TV shows. And it's, you do it every day, five days a week. Yeah. You, but and that's only broadcast in L.A., that version. Okay. Yeah. You're going to be... I, it's crazy to me. Let me... You I have a few it, other things. You, you grew up doing well, radio. I did it once at a time. I didn't have other jobs. <laughs> I wanted other jobs. No one would give me it any other out jobs. Fine. So <laughs> Yeah, it didn't work out fine. How old were you when you started in radio? So I, I started when I was uh, 16 years old, but I started calling into the radio station, the local station in Atlanta, when I was... 15 years old. Who would you call? Who was the I, DJ? I called a guy named Tom Sullivan, the night jock. Okay. After school, I'd get home, I'd call the request line, I'd try and get through to request a song and hear my voice back on the air. So I'd, you know, they tape you and I'd just wait for it to be played back. And I eventually got to know him and I got up, you know, I, I, I had the courage to say after a couple of months of calling in, could I come in and be your intern? And he let me do it and that's how I started. That's exactly what I did, by the Tom way. Tom Sullivan? Except not with Tom, but uh, with others. And I was calling in and saying hopefully funny things. And then eventually one of them took me to Seattle with him and I was the sidekick. And you're so excited just to be there. I was thrilled oh, to be here. We did this. We pulled the cartridges. They were cartridges to play the music on. We pulled, that's why my job was to pull them and stack them up in the right order so the right songs would play for the disc jockey. My job when I worked in radio was to mix everyone's cartridges up and change the labels <laughs> on them. So when they thought they were putting in a song, and said it was a sound effect of like an animal farting or something like that. That's what that's what I did. You have not missed your calling. Now. That's why I was fired from almost every one of my radio Is that true? jobs. Yes. How many were you fired from? Three? I was fired from five of them. Now, but your intern was Carson Daly, wasn't that's he? That's right. Carson Daly was my intern. And when I say intern, I, he wasn't actually in college or anything. He was just hanging around with me at the well, station. I, I, did, I did, you know, the, my, my, my big accomplishment when I was in Atlanta w was when I was 17, and they gave me permission and the keys to drive the van around, and I used to go give away T-shirts and bumper stickers in the drugstore parking lots, and I thought that I had made it. You know, well, I used that to, is the big deal, you, you right? You do the, the big call-in on the brick phone from Wall Street. Hey, it's Ryan Seacrest live in the Eckerd parking lot with some free bumper stickers and t-shirts. Come on down. I remember doing a, uh, we call them remotes, as you know, yeah. and I remember I got 75 bucks to do a four-hour remote, and I was so excited. It was from a carpet store uh, parking lot in Tucson, Arizona. It was about 117 degrees, and we couldn't have been happier to be well, out that's there. how you make extra money in radio. You go do those remotes, and they're, they're sponsored, so you make your 75 extra dollars, and you're thrilled. Well, I eventually figured out that radio was a horrible business filled with horrible people. <laughs> And you, who has I, no reason to remain in radio, remain in radio. I love it. You I do. I really do. I mean, I'm exhausted many days by the end of the day, but I feel like one of the reasons I was confident enough to host live television was because I had done so many hours of live radio. I mean, I was scared to death, terrified when I started American Idol, but after doing so many hours of live radio, you, you, you handle all kinds of different situations, and I think that helped with me hosting. It you. must have, because you, one thing I noticed, you never screw up. And even if you do screw up, only you know it, because we don't know that you screwed well, up. Well, that's not true. I, I do screw up. Not I, really. I just try and play it off. I watch every... I mean, I, <laughs> I watch you on this American Idol. And this, on, it's on this, a on this live show, show yeah. and 
you don't screw up, which is unbelievable to I'm me. I'm officially going to screw up now because you've said this. This I've is the season. You now. This is the season. You've cursed me. This is the season I will <laughs> screw everything what up. About